This is Kelanghapi Road, central Auckland. Most people call it K Road. My name is Six. For many years, K Road was my home. I was homeless. Now I publish the K Road Chronicle, a newspaper that gives street people their own voice. Every issue so far of the K Road Chronicle. This is the start of our third series. Look, series one, we were printing the Chronicle on a shitty old Canon photocopier that broke down every 20 prints in my bedroom. Now look at us, we've got our own office in the food court. We're also engaging in alternative products, not just the Chronicle, I mean, we're here because we're launching the Lockables. So when you're homeless or rough sleeping, literally living out of your backpack, you have to keep that backpack in those possessions with you all the time. So a friend of mine, when I was living on the street, he um, went round the back of some shops and found a wheelie bin that wasn't being used and put his own padlock on it. Thought, bingo. That was the, the light bulb moment. Today we are launching our own version with three of these lockables to be placed where they might help those doing it tough. Look at that. Secure as bro. It's a small gesture. The real thing that changed my life is being housed. And just in time for this series, Home Ground, the awesome new purpose-built community hub and housing centre for the Auckland City Mission, is opening after years in the planning. Well, we are here. It is such an honour to have the Acting Prime Minister to address us this morning. No my haramaiti whakanui, welcome to this celebration. This is a place where people can believe and be believed. This is a place where people can find themselves... After a successful opening, I went back a few weeks later. I wanted to catch up with Dave, a friend I knew from my time on the street. He's living here now and I wanted to find out what it's like. Yeah, he's six. <laughs> Come on. This is the mansion. Dave, abode. It's quite nice. Single man's quarters. That's all you need, eh? Yeah, yeah. Good, good stove for right. Nice clean bar. And how much stuff did it come with? Uh, again, fully furnished. Yeah, well, it's not like you're missing out on any kai, is it? No, well, that's a good thing about here. And because, of course, the kitchen yeah, yeah. downstairs, do you ever eat there? Yeah, yeah, you do sometimes. Not often, because I, I like to cook food myself, and I like to cook for other residents here. And I think we're actually the first um, media crew that's been allowed to come in and yep. actually talk to somebody. Yeah. You know, scared you might say something dodgy. <laughs> well, well there's like, nothing really bad to say. Yeah. It's been run, you know, teasing problems naturally, starting in a new place like this. Tell us a little bit about your path. Well, I was living with Tosh, my mate, and he OD'd and passed away. You know, it was a pretty traumatic time having your best mate die mm. in front of you. And, uh... But the mission, I mean, they, they came to the party and... That... They did. Having this place is great. You know, there's days when I wake up and I'm like, oh, God, I'm not being arrested, I'm not... Life on the edge isn't life on the edge as I used to know it, because I've never been like this. Mm. I had my life see me together. Mm. So, it's, uh... I'm loving it. Round it. Oh, that's the alarm. Do we have to evacuate? Yeah, we'll have to evacuate. All right. We assumed it was a false alarm, but it turned out to be a real fire, and we had to cancel filming for the rest of the day. Before resuming the interview, I caught up with Linda, the Health and Social Services Coordinator at Home Ground. Each, each side of the laneway here are community rooms. Colours are really gentle. We've got lots of wood. We've got... Hey, you are 80, 80 rooms? Uh, 80 uh, apartments. apartments. Uh, 80 apartments upstairs, yeah. yeah. How long have you been with the mission for? Since 2004. 
you must have seen some massive changes. Oh, yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah. Do you think we're moving in the right direction? I do think we're moving in the right direction. We've got, we've got people living here. It's beautiful. Yeah, you know, it's just, there's something, you know, that just warms your heart. Mm, and our it. beautiful stone that Nati Fatawa gave to us. And we touch the stone when we feel, well, I touch the stone quite a lot. It sort of balances me when I'm feeling a little frustrated. Which Let me get some stonage. <laughs> and it is. We've got some special things here. There are lots of different spaces and services at home ground. They even have a roof garden where they are growing their own veggies. This seemed the perfect place to pick up our interview with my friend Dave. There was an actual fire. It was, it was, it was scary, it was scary. It was an act electrical accident. It flooded the whole floor. Jeez. They, they had a big job moving everyone, finding new accommodation and that. So where was the, the occupant of the flat? They weren't home. I bet they felt pretty stink. He's been upset all since then, so he comes in my flat every day or two. Mm. Give him a cup of tea and a ciggy and, you know, uh, sort of, on the, they come to me more to help them out, just as someone to talk to. And mm. that's the great thing about this place. You've got to extend yourself and not ignore people and go, how are you? You know, because we all live together. And there's a real sense of community um, within home ground. If it wasn't for home ground, where do you think you'd be now? I would hate to think. I'd be in jail, probably, because mm. that's, you know. How much time do you reckon you spend inside? Ooh, oh, no, a year. Yeah. Two years at the most, you know. So I've done plenty of those, like, plenty, like, over 10, over 15 different visits to Her Majesty. Yeah, and that was to feed your addiction. Yeah, yeah. How much would you be spending a week on narcotics? Oh, at least a thousand a week. A thousand a week? Yeah, yeah, at least. What's your poison of preference? Well, I don't know. Petrol, pot, booze, you know, heroin, morphine. Before you came to home ground, you're on pretty rocky ground. Yeah, I'm I mean I'm I'm grateful to the mission, grateful to you. Having this place has been great, you know, and that's community. You know, and to be a part of community is it's rewarding. I know as part of the richness of mm. the street community, mm. you know, like that's people having one another's backs, um, Fano squabbles, mm. but always there for one another is is actually the the piece that Joe Public doesn't see. Jackie, general manager of brand, income, and innovation, had a big role in the initial planning. And I think that with home ground apartments, what we what we were very focused on in the design process, along with the mm. community, was saying, what do you need? Yeah. What do you need to sustain housing? What matters to you? And the stuff that mattered was shared space, yeah. a space to come and go from, a, a space that creates a sense of belonging and a sense of whānau and home. It's really nicely appointed. And the, that, that notion of kind of the outlook and yeah. the, that feeling of space. We have almost 75 people, I think, you know, four floors up in, the, in this mm. building. And the majority are people who have not, prior to this, been able to sustain housing. So why now? Because the barrier for entry was low, because there is support within arm's reach, because there is safety, because there is easy access to healthcare. We are working with people to enable uh, them to live their best possible lives, whatever that looks like for them. People aren't how they present today, mm. right? Like everyone who walks in our doors here had a dream as a five-year-old, mm. and it sure as hell wasn't to be homeless. Mm. Oh, I come from a good family, lovely yeah. family, beautiful people. What went wrong? Uh, well, they always used to say with me, you're hyperactive, you I mean, I was always addicted to sugar and drinks and that, and I, I was a different kid, you know, I don't... You're I, a different adult. Yeah. <laughs> Do your kids come and visit? My daughter, I got her up here, she loved it, she thought it was really grass and that. And my son comes a bit, 
I think they're just happy that they know I'm here and that they don't have to worry about me, you know? Yeah. And that's a big thing. So, future looks bright? The, fu the future's wonderful. 